Survive to Thrive with me, Dr. Todd. Uh, daily, bringing you tips and tricks to move you out of this world of just surviving a day into that world of thriving up and above. And this is not going to sound right. <laughs> the title obviously intrigued you if you've ever looked at it, but this is not going to sound right about living up and above in suffering. But I would have you consider today, suffering is one of the um, greatest things that you can go through. So uh, reading um, the uh, life of Buddha and going back um, in his history, basically there was a, um, there was a, um, uh, a king and uh, the king wanted nothing but perfection for his prince and that prince um, essentially um, was going to be sheltered from um, any of the suffering of the world and it didn't didn't know any any of the heartaches any of the suffering anything that went on outside of the palace and the story goes is that that prince never really had an appreciation for anything that he had. So it was like, the king was like, well, I give you riches and I give you all these things and anything that you could ever want for, um, you have, here it is, and we'll give it to you. But the challenge was, is that that prince never had any reference point. The prince never had any reference point to not know. And for instance, the everything that this prince had became his only thing. So just like night and day and just like darkness and light, you have to have a reference point. And so this, this prince decided to run away, decided to go out and explore life and learn to suffer, like living outside of the, the palace and and uh, knowing um, sickness and disease and seeing the homelessness and became homeless himself. Anyways, the long story of suffering allowed him to see that in suffering as well, he wasn't finding what he was looking for. And the story goes and goes and goes and goes is man's search for enlightenment in, in enlightenment. But for this prince to come back to the kingdom and know what he had and this is a, a abridged version of buddha's story but essentially to not know suffering meant that only goodness only richness the only things that he had was his only reference point and that became his own suffering you see you start to see that everything and everybody is alike. Here's here's the deal. If you look at it from a standpoint of riches, riches come with big problems, bigger problems often. The more money that you have, often the more issues that can pop up. The bigger your business, the more issues that can pop up. And so oftentimes what we seek and what we are looking for has the same suffering, if you will, at the level that we're at right now. There is a point to this. So if you think of, of the fact that suffering is at every level, then it is a necessary part of life, is it not? See, the tip and the trick today is to recognize suffering as part of life. Now, some of, uh, we've been uh, told before, you guys are sheltering your kids because we homeschooled them. And I had the conversation, um, Kellen uh, plays sports, and, and so that's his connections with, uh, you know, the, the real world, so to speak, in school. And um, his uh, comment the other day was like, yeah, I guess some kid got caught smoking cigarettes or vaping, and this was so many offenses, and, and he's off to juvie. And... He goes, that's why I homeschool. I go, no, that's absolutely not why you homeschool. And so we had a conversation. I said, that's not why you homeschool. I said, homeschooling is not to protect you from what's going on outside of the world. Like this prince that was protected by the king. It's actually to provide an environment 
that I feel is better for you to flourish. As my queen says, we're not actually a bubble. We're not keeping our kids in a bubble. It's a greenhouse. It's a greenhouse to allow them to flourish. They'll have plenty of shit coming their way in life, no doubt. There's plenty of suffering that is part of that necessary journey. And we create the best environment that we can, but we can't control for everything. So some of you need to hear this from a standpoint of suffering and that in suffering, you are learning and getting the necessary tools that you need and reference to be able to get you to a different level. I've had some back pain for the last couple of weeks and I never have back pain. And it allows me in that suffering to analyze and pour into my body a little bit more. Figuring things out as a chiropractor that has back pain. All right. That's like a carpenter that uh, his house is falling apart. <laughs> all right. But I get to come from a reference point in this suffering. I get to slow down. I get to change my workout routines. I get to shift into stretching and look at things a little bit differently. But without that suffering, I would have likely skipped by some of the stretches and the crucial imbalances that I had only to have some bigger issues down the road. So I don't know where you're suffering today. It could be in your body. It could be in your back. It could be in a relationship with a loved one, your significant other, a kiddo that's close to you. It could be in your workplace. But you have to consider that suffering is a necessary part to, in order to know the other aspects of life. Now, I'm not saying that you need to be in suffering for long, long, long periods of time, all right? But if you're going through suffering right now, to step aside and look at, look at what you are supposed to learn. Now, the other side of this too, religion takes that and twists it into a necessary part. Like in order to get good, you have to suffer, right? Because of the reference point, the reference point of Christ on the cross, he suffered so that we could have, so we all must suffer so that we can have, is absolutely a lie. That's not what this, this podcast is about. That's not the direction that you can take this, more so just that it is. It is. Just like happiness, happiness is not a destination. It's not like, hey, I have arrived at happiness. See, some people can find happiness in suffering. And part of this is knowing that there's a gift in that. And in that gift, you walk away, expanded in a whole different person. But if you had no reference, this is like if you were not ever to work and play was the only thing that you actually knew, play becomes work. Mark Twain once said that. Play becomes work. Or if you only knew work and never had that reference of play, work becomes play. Play becomes work. It's the same concept. So in your world today, evaluate where you are suffering and look at it as just a necessary part of what you're going through. It happens. It not, it's not happening because you did something right or did something wrong not that punishment. It's not like life is out to get you. More so in the aspects of it is a necessary part of discovery. It is a necessary part of enlightenment. It is a necessary part of life. And when you start to see that as a necessity and that happiness is never a destination, meaning once I get through this, once I get through this suffering, and then once I have this car, and then when I marry that girl, or then when I can actually change this job, I will be happy. It's this byproduct of if this, then this. Almost like it's some mathematical formula that's been designed that if you figure this out and you do the right things, then you will have, and you fill in the blanks, versus understanding understanding the concept of, of happiness and suffering are there like dark and light. And you can create in your own world suffering and happiness. 
It's almost like the human mind, when it doesn't have suffering, needs to pick out something. It's like, where do we need to go suffer now? Because I'm not okay being happy. But you could have both. And both, I would have you consider, are necessary parts of the human body, the human experience. In that you cannot totally eliminate all suffering. And you can't always be happy. But you can create majorities. You can go the distance, shorten some suffering, learn something from it, look back at it, so as not to suffer as long or as much, or to get a gift out of it, but to be grateful and to be happy. That is a choice. That is a choice. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all I got for you today. But in back pain, in the struggles of a relationship, in fitness, suffering is a necessary part of growth. And so where were you looking at suffering before as a punishment? Where were you, where are you looking before as suffering as the gods striking down at you? Where were you looking at suffering as just your lot in life versus understanding there is a gift, something to learn, something to move, something to change, something to grasp out of this to get out of that life of just surviving. And you got it. Moving to that world above of thriving. So, once you grasp the concept, the suffering ends. The suffering will end. Always does. And tomorrow will be a new day. So grasp the concept today. And grasp suffering as not necessary to get to somewhere but just a big part of life that will happen it just happens and the more you embrace that and you're okay with what is the happiness is just a byproduct we'll talk to you tomorrow